What is going on, Tube? Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gents. You can see the Maggie is still up on the uh, ramps. We've got our drain pan finally. It finally arrived. I could have just got one from the freaking auto store. But the main thing that I was waiting on, and I still don't have, but it's supposed to be getting here later today, is another coolant tank reservoir. So uh, I figured I would just go ahead and start flushing the system right now, get all this old coolant out. So we can go ahead and take care of that while it's nice and cool in the morning. And then when the, the expansion tank finally arrives, we can come out here and deal with it then. But I can go ahead and get it unbolted, get the system flushed and stuff like that. So I can just plop it in and refill it with the coolant. Here's the coolant we're going to be running. See right here. Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram 2001 to 2012 includes hybrid vehicles, yada yada yada. But here's what we're uh, concerned about right here 2001 to 2012, because you guys know as time goes on, they switch over to different freaking uh, uh, different coolants. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's see, let's go up on here. <laughs> you see, it's definitely not yellow. This is still the, the gold slash yellow or orange. It depends on, you know, how old your coolant is, as uh, what color is going to be. But as you can see, this is supposed to be the gold formula. Uh, they've since moved on to like a pinkish purple formula. I believe this used to be purple and now it's pink. I don't remember anymore. I'm not going to lie to you. I think that thing has purple coolant, but this is what we got. And this is what we're rolling with North American vehicles. You can see it specifically calls out Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. And it's going to be some concentrate. That's why we have our distilled water. So 50 50 mix. We're going to have to 50 50 mix it, you know. And that's another thing that I'm waiting on is my, my mixing cup. So I don't want to really use, uh, be putting coolant up inside my freaking chemical guys buckets and then eyeballing it from there so waiting on that and waiting on the coolant tank to get here so i can get a new coolant tank because you see this old one's nice and dirty and yucky looking and these are prone to cracking and stuff but mainly i just want because i want to be able to see what the hell is actually in there also um you can see my uh filter is missing one because i bought a new one of those as well and it doesn't get here to friday i guess there's like a specific California one I have to get because I don't know I typed in this part number uh I don't think they make it anymore it's been replaced by what is it that's f 6 a 6 and every time I typed it in I kept coming up with RF uh 0420 or something like that I don't know either way uh, I measured the dimensions since six wide to the opening seven inch across five inch up top six and a half uh tall and the two that i saw um out of the two that i saw the rf part number was the one that was able to ship to california i guess there's california compliant ones you know because california and the uf i believe was the other one same part number but just different start one's a uf and one's a rf i believe uh i'll put it up in the video but this is the one that can come to California, so that's the one I bought. And it's the, it measures the same size. And I tried to look for an OEM Magnum uh, thing, but uh, I guess I was typing in the wrong thing because it kept just bringing up air filters and it wasn't bringing up the entire air box. I'm pretty sure I could have went to like Dodge.com or Mopar Parts Online or some Mopar site and probably would have found what I needed. But oh well, this is what we got and this is what we're going to roll with. The k &N seems to be doing okay. You know, that basket is a little... Ugh. I'm going to replace this at some point. This is just sad looking so yeah this is gonna get replaced at some point you see someone already tried gluing stuff back up there but i'm guessing it's just so damn hot in here oh they didn't even they just glued the bottom of this thing no wonder it didn't stick i thought they were like i thought this was cut open it's not even cut open so that might be what i do i'll probably just cut it open and slide it down up on top of it and that should help it stick and not look so freaking yucky yeah but it still just looks beat to hell but it's in there so for those of you who don't know you pop this little guy off and you simply fill up this guy right here so you don't have air pockets and stuff and you just keep filling this up until the coolant comes out of that little port right there take it down in there that little port you might be able to see it better from this side sorry about the sun yep just keep filling and it's going to be same on all five seven uh vehicles uh if it's over here if your coolant hose is over here this is where it's going to be sometimes i, I believe on trucks and jeeps and stuff or trucks uh your coolant hose will be flipped and it'll be over here so that little port will be over this side you know it'll just it'll just be flipped that's all it is but it's going to be somewhere at the top and it's going to be this little hex bit as you can see there i said mine was a quarter inch so that's what i'm rolling with and uh 
yeah let's go ahead and get this thing drained out that should be pretty simple i've already taken off both pans there's an the oil pan and here's the pan so i can access the coolant so nothing to see there uh if you want what that takes didn't want to bore you guys with that 10 millimeter for the oil pan and then this little guy seven mil for all of these right here and then there's two of these i don't know where the hell the other one went. i lost it i think it's still in the the cover but anyway, it's two of these guys on the side, and you pop these two out, and it drops right down. Yeah, so it's a shit ton of those. Anywho, let's go ahead and pop this drain open, get this shit drained out. Ugh. All right, so got my drain pan. It should be this guy right here. That's what it should be. As you see, the hose is going into it. So let's go ahead and pop it open and see what the freak happens. Might need both my hands for this because. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I got it cracked open. Kind of a pain in the ass. Had to break the grip plies out. I guess my hands are just not strong enough. Got little girly hands. But uh, there she is up there. That's it. This little guy right here. Let it drain on out. So just gonna leave it as is because I don't want to turn it too far in or break something because this is plastic. This car is old. A lot of old parts on this car. And uh, I don't really feel like trying to hunt down anything. So I'm just gonna let it go. shocked about how much is in here I'm not gonna lie to you let's check up top oh yeah it's out of there now obviously there's coolant throughout the whole freaking uh, system and this probably won't get it all so that's why we have extra distilled water so we can try to get it out of there As a matter of fact let's go ahead and grab a funnel uh, still a little, a little flimsy but it's in there it's in there we're still draining anyway, so I'll just keep waiting. Uh, pick back up when I'll get ready to dump in some water. All right, two of you, so update. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace this guy while I'm in here. So I've been holding this uh, thermostat ever since I had my first 5.7. Or was it when I had my scat pack? No, that's when I had my 5.7. So I'm gonna put this, you can, you can just look at this. This just looks old. But it's still in the package. Um, bought this thing way back in 2013, 14. Like I said, it was supposed to go on my first 5.7, and I never got around to it. This was like when I was doing the going through my bolt-on phase, and I, I thought I knew about cars and stuff and making them fast. Had my K&N intake, had my Diablo tuner, had my freaking thermostat I was ready to throw in there. And then I totaled the car. Then I got a Scat Pack. And then I got rid of that one. Then I got a Hellcat. And then that one blew up on me. And then I got another Hellcat. And then I traded in on the Jeep. And then I got a red eye. So I'm just gonna throw it in there, especially since the coolant, as you can see, is drained. So now's gonna be a perfect time to pop those other screws off and throw this bad boy in there. So let's get to it. All right, so to take those uh, bolts off for the thermostat housing, this is just gonna be a 13. Um, as you can see, I have one of them already out. I'll let you guess where the other one is right now. And uh, it ain't up here with me. So there we go. Thermostat. Thermostat looks good. So I'm just going to set this little guy off here to the side. Thermostat doesn't look bad at all. And uh, yeah, good time for you to inspect some stuff. Uh, let me check this one. It has a bunch of like rubber and shit on the top of it. I don't know if that's just overtime use or what, but I don't really want to touch it with my hands, get cooling all of my hands. Uh, so I'm gonna grab some gloves. Just wanted to show you guys a little bit. So as you can see, this little guy has a little bit of wear and tear. I don't know what's going on with that little piece sticking up. Don't mind the grommet. Obviously, I had to pry it out of there. She was she was in there pretty good. But I think that's a little bleed hole or whatever where I don't I don't know what the hell that is, but it don't look right. It don't look as good as the new one. So obviously this is a 180 thermostat. And a lot of people, oh you're supposed to have it tuned for 180. It's alright. I just want a thermostat in there, it's gonna work. You see this one doesn't have all those crazy things sticking out. The grommet is still there. So there she is. Like I said, don't mind my one bolt. We're gonna have to go fishing for it here shortly. Uh, check the housing. Nothing crazy looking in there. So let's go pop this guy in. Should 
just slide right on in there right like it's been the whole time and then we'll be good to start flushing the system after I go fishing for the other boat so I'm gonna put put it back on there good to go check it one more time for you guys new one is in I don't think it has to be any specific orientation or anything just nice and seated and once you put the screws on that's gonna help push it down up in there and not have it looking like this one so uh, let's go ahead and put the screws back on all right got my other boat out went fishing for it um and I got cooling all over my driveway but that was to be expected once you start playing with cool systems that's just gonna happen but uh, let's go ahead and get the housing tightened down and then we'll start throwing some uh, distilled water through the system to get it flushed and you're gonna have to turn it on for a couple of times to let it you know actually circulate through the system and then we'll just let it drain on out so let's get to it nice and snug back into place let's go ahead and grab some uh, some water oh I already had one pop it open get us more cool or not cool but water the perfect time for you to check the leaks and stuff too before you start throwing cool in there and wasting cool. So, so I'll go ahead and fill it up with water and then check where everything's coming out at. The bleed hose is only cracked, it's not open, so nothing should be coming out of the bleeder just yet. There we go, it's filled up, you can hear it running down low. Yep, see all that old coolant? That's not water, that's more coolant coming out. And that's why you run distilled water through because although the it was done draining before, once you put that freaking water in there, it's gonna help flush out that old coolant. And as you can see, that's exactly what it's doing. That is pink water, some old pink lemonade. I mean, it's orange. So it looks like they had the right stuff in there because like I said, it's supposed to be the gold color, but over time, you know, it's gonna get discolored and stuff like that. Dude due to all the heat cycles. So it looks like they had the right stuff in there, just not enough of it. And I don't wanna take the chance of putting the right stuff in there and then it'd be different from what the hell they had in there. So let's check up top. Still draining down, as you can see, it's coming down slowly. So I'll let it keep doing that. And get ready to pour some more. Cool levels, see right there. Still running through the system. Does look like it's clearing out a little bit, so that's a good thing. I might run one more jug through it and we'll be good on the flush. Just gonna let it keep cycling a little bit, let it keep running for a couple of seconds. Damn. I don't even think we'll have to do another damn jug. That's damn near water just coming out. But you gotta look at that. I mean, I, I wouldn't drink that. I wouldn't chance it. But it's, it's damn near clear. Right. We'll shut it down. Back. And just temp up to 89 degrees. A good way is from overheating, but we're just gonna shut it down anyway. Let it finish draining. And I think we're gonna be good there. A little 10 millimeter here and here. That is gonna be two clamps here and on this hose down there somewhere.
That's a great. That's a great thing to do. So, if I can pick that up on camera, see this little indent here? That's what's just sitting in there. You have to push those in, get this thing out of the way, and this should just pop right up. Unfortunately, um, I didn't do that. So you see, I broke the tab off of this. I wanted to break the tab off of this since I knew I was replacing the damn, the, the reservoir, but oh well, it's out now. Gonna leak a little bit, has a little bit left over, but reservoir is out. Check for anything else crazy that might be going on down there. And uh probably not gonna fit in there how it's supposed to, but that's okay. We didn't damage it or crack the case, so I mean we did damage it, but the case isn't cracked. So one side should be alright. We'll be alright. It's just a steering fluid. I don't really need that. Alrighty, so with that out of the way, we're at a good stopping point. Uh, vehicle has stopped draining, so I'm just gonna go on there, close out the valve, and now we wait for my measuring bucket. Yes, I bought a measuring bucket. I could have just eyeballed it and probably been good to go with uh, guessing what 50-50 is, but I bought a measuring bucket because I wanna use a measuring bucket. I'm gonna wait till my measuring bucket gets here. Also, we have to wait for the reservoir to get here anyway, and that should be showing up at the same time as my measuring bucket. So, on that terrible bombshell, I will close out this portion of the video. We'll pick back up in a little bit. Hopefully, when it's not too terribly hot out today, we can get that other, that new reservoir on without any issues. I might need a little bit of grease on those fittings, on the end of the fittings and whatnot. Not too much that I want to get it in the system, but just a little bit, maybe a little bit of oil or something. Something to help slide them in there and get them on without, uh, without tearing shit all apart. And, uh, yeah. So I'll pick back up whenever that time comes. All right, I'm out. All right, the tube you. So we're back in the garage. You can see we lost a little bit of light outside. That's okay. It's not as hot right now. Unfortunately, the wind did pick up, as you can see. And all of my stuff came from Amazon, including the new tank and my new bucket. Bucket, plural. So I kind of had an F up where I guess I just don't read enough. I know for a fact I typed in bucket, a bucket into the search on Amazon and somehow, some way, I got two and a half quart cups, 12 two and a half quart cups. So I don't have a bucket, but I did have this guy laying around. I'm not using my chemical guys buckets because I like to wash with those. Unfortunately, this is my bucket that I use to clean my fish tank. So I'm going to need a new bucket to clean my fish tank now, but it does have the measuring lines so I can see one, two, up to five gallons. So we're just going to do one and one. So one gallon of concentrated uh, mix and then one gallon of distilled water. See what it looks like and then throw that in there in the car. After, of course, we get the freaking uh, new thing on. So just going to show you guys. You see everything seems to line up. Got our two little tabs right there for our steering reservoir. Here's the little hose, the big hose on the back. New, uh, new cap. Just look how much nicer that looks compared to that. Ugh. Ever since, well, I assume ever since 2005, that's what that, this thing has been on a car, and it looks bad. So, got the new one. That was really the main reason. I just didn't want that ugly old thing in there. And now I can actually see where the coolant is in the freaking thing versus over here. So I do see one difference, though. So these seem to have, like, some type of, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's aluminum or what. I don't think it's steel because I think steel could corrode too fast. But And these seem to be copper. So that is a one small difference, but oh well. All the lines and all that other stuff still lines up good. So let's go ahead, throw it into the car. Probably just gonna overlay some music over this little next couple of steps because it's windy and I don't really feel like talking over the wind and you guys can't hear me. So let's go ahead, set you guys up on the car and then I'm gonna go ahead and knock out getting this tank on finally, now that it's finally here. 
and then we'll throw in the cooler. Just wanted to take you guys over here real quick to show you. Here's the drain plug right here. And this little guy right here is what we're watching. So I'm, so I'm just going to keep filling it up until we finally see something coming out of here. And that's going to let me know that there's no air pockets or anything that can get stuck in the system, causing the car to overheat and shit like that. So let me get back to it. Now pick it back up. As soon as I start seeing something come out, I'll grab you guys. I was a little worried for a second. All right, so we're getting some out of that top. So I'm just gonna close it up. Feel max, but that's okay. All right, now we're gonna turn it on, let it run, run out of daylight. I know my belts are whining and shit because I got cooling on the belts. So that should be dropping down here shortly. Just keep an eye on it, make sure it does. Pretty sure I have a check engine light because I left this guy unplugged when I went to start the car. That's no wiggy. We'll just clear it out. Make sure to check it first before we clear it though. Make sure you don't hear any funky noises. Other than my belt's whining now because I got cooling all over. So let's see. Hopefully that temperature gets up, once it gets up to, hopefully once it gets to 180, to let me know that the 180 start actually works. All right, two of you, time to close out this little ordeal here. So, tank is up there, nice and shiny and spiffy looking. Don't worry, it's not wet. It is hot, because I just drove it around the block. As you can see, we finally came below that cold field max line. So the coolant should be throughout the system by now. There's no leaks, no weird sounds, no noises. That check engine light was a P0113, which was the uh, mass airflow sensor. I had it unplugged the first time I started the car. Uh, so yeah, duh. Uh, went ahead and cleared that. Nothing else popped back up after that. Uh, note to self, just make sure you have it plugged in when you go start the car. Other than that, comp filters back on. Filter did not just randomly pop off when I was driving around the street. She did get up the temp. Like I said, no crazy leaks or sounds or anything so i think i did all right i think i did okay guys check one more again for some leaks and stuff i don't see anything no crazy leaks or anything i think we're good to go i didn't want to park in the same spot because then i wouldn't be able to see if i was actually leaking or anything but i don't see any leaks guys i think we're in the clear so on that terrible bombshell 
hope you guys learned something from me today if not then oh well if if anything i hope you found it at least entertaining to watch me out here struggle with such a simple task um it's first time stop by like subscribe hit that bell icon so you guys get notification these videos go up hey now <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> y'all heard that too right uh okay anyway uh, it's first time stop by, like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, so you guys get a notification when these videos go up. So we go to the Instagram channel at low 376 slow all one word, I'll put it down in the description. Until next time, to you, I'm out. Peace.